Welcome, Bearbackers. Good to see everybody today. Uh, we have three coaches to hear from today, so let's go ahead and get started with the week ahead. Uh, today and tomorrow, our women's golf team is playing in a tournament at Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, tomorrow night, men's soccer hosts Missouri State, an old rival of ours from the Missouri Valley Conference days, 7 p.m. at the Bill Stevens Complex tomorrow night. Friday, the Volleyball Sugar Bears head to San Antonio, play in the UTSA tournament. They play host UTSA 10 a.m. on Friday in Sam Houston State at 4 p.m. That's also an old Southland Conference rival, so playing a lot of our old friends. Uh, Saturday, women's golf opens play in a tournament at Penn State in Happy Valley, playing twice this week. A lot of travel for them. Uh, volleyball continues Saturday at UTSA, taking on Alabama at 11 a.m. And the football Bears open their home season at 6 p.m. on the stripes against our old friends from Austin P. Sunday, men's soccer is back at home again against Florida International, 7 p.m. that night. Women are on the road at ULM in Monroe, Louisiana at 1 p.m. Sunday. We'll start today with men's soccer. Still rolling along. They won again at home on Thursday night. They beat Oral Roberts 1 to nothing. We got a goal just over three minutes into the match from Tajio uh, James, and that held up for the next 86 plus minutes, which is really, really hard to do in soccer. Score that early and hold up and, and win 1 0. Our goalkeeper, Javier Ramirez, had six saves. He now has three shutouts on the season. Uh, speaking of that, that came out after our Bearbackers last week. Javier was named the A-Sun Goalkeeper of the Week last week, and Kevin Ventura was named the A-Sun Defender of the Week last week. Congratulations to them. We're now, <laughs> we're now three and one overall. The only loss came to then number 15 Wake Forest on the road. Uh, as I said, at home tomorrow night against Missouri State at seven, and Sunday night against Florida International at seven. Now let's hear from Coach Frank Kolstein. Okay, you trust me then. Huh? Last week I was one of the nicest guys you've ever met, and this week you trust me, so that our relationship is moving forward. That's, that's old guys can talk to each other that way. That's what they told me in the back, because I'm an old guy too. So uh, really excited about what the team did um, against Oral Roberts. They came in as they were like the 30th ranked team in the, in the country. And in, in soccer, in Division I, we're, we're all in one group. Uh, so, you know, you could play against the number one or you could play against the number 30. And we like to play against the best teams we can, I think, uh, just so we're better able to handle the conference and that, that seems uh, easier for us. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I believe that uh, athletics does, it, it makes you ready for challenges. Um, and for our team, you know, we, we faced a, a big challenge uh, this week. And I want to ask all, everybody that uh, is a UCA fan, to think about uh, one of our boys on the, the soccer team. Uh, so we had the match on Thursday, and we were all really, really happy and, and excited. And then uh, so uh, on the day after, we have like, uh, we call it the Dodger Cup in honor of my 80-pound uh, pit bull who uh, so our second team and uh, our first team guys that didn't play enough, they, they play in, uh, in that match. Well, uh, Lucas, the young man I'm talking about that I'm asking for you to send you know, positive thoughts uh, about and you know, whatever uh, faith you have to ask whatever God you believe in to uh, you know, to look after him. So after he played in it, he, he went to urgent care and they found a lump in his, uh, in his lungs. And so then went further on. And uh, Lucas is all right with me telling his story. 
So anybody that's a lawyer out there that's worried about, because um, I, I ask them, and the more people uh, that know and are sending positive energy for Lucas, uh, the the better it is. But then, then they sent him uh, and did uh, a scan, and he had some lumps that they believe is cancer. And you know that that's supposed to happen to a, an old fart like myself, not to a 20-year-old uh, that was last year was one of the fittest guys on the team and. This is how sometimes us coaches are, are just freaking clueless. Because I had been on him about his fitness level and, you know, how hard he was playing. And, uh, you know, here we find out that, uh, you know, he has cancer. But talk about a guy that's handling it well. So he's, as, as I'm talking to him on Friday and saying, yeah, Lucas, I'll ride down with you. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll stay with you because, you know, his family's from Hawaii. Um, so he said, yeah, Frank, uh, all in to go all out, which is one of our core covenants of our team. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you wonder if your work is going somewhere beyond just wins and losses. Because, you know, and the answer is, Yes, you know, when you're doing it for the right reasons, for the right guys. Uh, I mean, you, you would be amazed about, I mean, he was cheering up the guys that came to visit him. And we did a, a Zoom with the team for Lucas to tell the guys so that we thought, uh, you know, it would be better for them to hear it from Lucas and that he's all for them and he wants them to keep going. So. What a, what a tremendous young man. But um, the, the good news is he had uh, the biopsy uh, yesterday, and he got discharged today, and we'll see maybe later today or tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, it's just things that sort of put life in perspective, but you also have to realize, and this is what I was trying to get my team to realize, and uh, I hope all of you will do this too is that, you know, Lucas was still very, very positive even though he got this dreadful news as, as, a, as a 20-year-old. Uh, and when we're telling the team, they're all crying and Lucas is making jokes, you know, with them to try and help them feel better. And he said, hey guys, don't forget. And sorry, Matt, but I have to use this one. He said, purple bears take care of purple bears. So he was trying to buoy, buoy them up at the same time and say, hey, guys, we're on a run now. Let's keep this going. Uh, so just really, really a good lesson for everybody about why you have athletics, why you set high standards, why those people that achieve them can achieve great things. Because to be positive in those instances to me, is achieving a, a great thing. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to let all of you know, because this is, you know, what I believe that our athletic program here at UCA is is all about. Because the guys on the team will tell you, I'm I'm a pretty tough guy when it comes to demanding from them, but I'm totally moosh when it comes to something happening to them, and. Uh, Lucas, when I was sitting with him, he says, well, Frank, and I think this had something to do with my age, maybe. He said, Frank, you've been doing this a long time. Has this ever happened before? And I said, yes, Lucas, it's, it's never fun, but it's probably been like three times that, uh, you know, three times over 45 years isn't something that you deal with on a regular basis, but it, in those three times, it's never been someone like the way Lucas has handled it. And, uh, and we're hoping this is the same because all of them have had good, good outcomes and, uh, and they're still, still going, right? So I, I just wanted to let you know about that. And then uh, on, on a different note, 
So let's get back, because, you know, I know I'm the, the li little old guy that comes up here and tries to make people laugh, because uh, I think I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, you know, but I didn't have the guts to do that. But I love, uh, I love sport so much that, uh, you know, I was going to do something, and, you know, I, I challenge almost everybody except Steve uh, about knowledge of every sport uh, around the world. Um, but in, in these moments, uh, you, you can have something like what happened last night when I'm watching uh, the NFL game uh, between Detroit and LA, where my first year as a consultant, the uh, center back was a guy named Jake Bates. And on our team, he was a huge guy. I mean, he was 6'2", 190, sometimes 200 pounds. And then he's the kicker for the Lions, and he comes out there and uh, ties the game up, and then all the football players get around him, and you go, man, he's just a little midget, you know? <laughs> but in soccer, he was a huge guy, and he, he played center back his uh, freshman and sophomore year. So I was challenging uh, Coach Brown, I said, Coach Brown, <laughs> we got a guy in the NFL. Come on, man. <laughs> you got to start putting more guys in there, you know. But uh, I think that's, that's more than we have currently in the MLS. So maybe, maybe we got to start doing more. That's Major League Soccer, which is the top league in our country uh, for soccer. So I might send some, some of those guys that we think can make the MLS or to work with Coach Brown. Because... The Tajio James that scored the goal, and I'm sorry to take too long today, but that scored the goal, he runs like a, a 4 3 40. So, to give you some idea, there's a reason why he flies by all those defenders. Um, and right before I came here, uh, you know, he has a class during our training today, and um, he's, he's not skipping class, JT. Uh, he's. he's he, he came out to train right before this because, you know, when you have success like he had, it, it keeps you going. So uh, we, we'd really appreciate everybody coming out tomorrow night. It's a big rival for us and uh, really appreciate everyone today. And let's go. Go Bears. Thanks for sharing that, Frank, about Lucas. And also, you might need to keep Taggio away from uh, Josie if he runs a 4-3. <laughs> he might be interested in him for some track. He's worked with Mike before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our women's soccer team dropped a pair of matches last week. Uh, lost 2-0 to Little Rock and 3-0 against UTSA. In the Little Rock game, it scored us for 88 and a half minutes. The Trojans scored twice at the 88-33 mark and the 89-minute mark. Scoreless for 88 and a half minutes. Only four total shots on goal in that entire match, so obviously a very defensive game. As I said, the Bears are back in action on Thursday in the resumption of the ASU game that was postponed on August 29th in Jonesboro. We'll go up there and play the second half of that match at 5.30 Thursday. Of course, there's an 80% chance of rain on that day, so we may play it, may not. And then we're back at home on Sunday at 1 p.m. versus uh, ULM. Cross country, we finally get to hear from head coach Josie Weaver today about our home meet from two weeks ago and what's upcoming for our cross country teams. Let's hear from Coach Weaver. I've, uh, I've got some friends here because I got warned that if I didn't show up, I kept getting talked about pretty pretty badly there. So um, I, I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's been been a busy two weeks for us. Um, just to sort of catch everybody up of where we are right now. I uh, had a successful home meet. That was kind of what we view as our rust buster uh, in, in Division One cross country. Nothing really counts until that week of September 26 in terms of national points and, and getting uh, recognition and, and honors to try to get people qualified to the national meet as individuals and also at large points as teams. So we've, uh, we've got kind of a hiatus from competing since our home meet until then, and we'll go up to Columbia, Missouri then and uh, run on the Gaines Creek Classic. 
Uh, the cool part about this meet is next year, it's actually where the national championship is hosted. So we'll get to see some teams that think that they're going to be at the national championship. Um, it will be some, some really tough competition, but we're looking forward to battling that. Uh, similar to what it sounds like Frank and soccer does, uh, it should make our conference meet not look as tough um, versus some of the teams we'll see there. Uh, had a lot of success with our young guys. We had uh, Brooklyn Nicholson from Russellville. Uh, she was the freshman A-Sun Athlete of the Week after the home meet. Um, Trey Baker uh, was also the men's A-Sun Freshman of the Week. So good for both of those. And obviously Madeline Hill had taken home the A-Sun Runner of the Week uh, during that span. But we've really transitioned now to a week of, uh, I should say, four weeks of training. Um, it's, it's amazing what we can do together. Uh, it's hard sometimes in the summer alone to, to get quality work in and, and get to where they need to be. Uh, but when we get the group together, we've, we've had a quality session this past week, and hopefully we look to, to build a few more into that. Um, as far as, uh, I guess, looking ahead, um, I was talking to, I think, uh, Zach Brady about this the other day. Um, cross country, what a weird sport. We literally can go over all year long, and then you win the championship, and you're the conference champion. Coach Brown, I recommend that you could take a little different path than, <laughs> than that, and then we'll be we'll be pulling for you on that. But uh, that's it, it's an odd sport, um, but that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, as far as our team, just to give you a little background on where we're at right now, we lose five individuals from our women's cross team. Um, that's a cross team of ten, so we're losing half of our roster. So. Uh, the reason I haven't been here the past two weeks, we've been having recruits on campus. Um, we actually had one today. I was able to get her out the door before I came in here. Um, but it's, it's going to be a really big year for the women's side uh, of our cross-country program. On the men's side, we're, we've got a lot more depth there, so not as, not as big of a, a need there. Um, but hopefully it's a good year. Frank, we're going to try to be out there tomorrow. I uh, really wanted to shout out soccer. Thanks for coming out home cross-country meet. Um, made a huge difference, and, and it just shows Bears supporting Bears. So, uh, any questions? All right, go Bears. Uh, the Volleyball Sugar Bears played three times out in Fort Collins, Colorado last weekend. Unfortunately, we lost all three to Grand Canyon, uh, host Colorado State, and Oregon. Oregon is 4-1 and one on the year, ranked number 12 in the nation. Their only loss was to number four, Pittsburgh, so pretty stiff competition out there. Uh, this weekend, it's back on the road again to San Antonio to play three times against UTSA, Sam Houston, and Alabama, as I said. And then finally, next weekend, they play at home after 10 straight road matches. We'll hear from Coach Newberry next Monday. Uh, football Bears went on the road again last Saturday. This time came back with a 34-13 victory over the Lindenwood Lions this time with no controversial ending. Uh, the Bears started slow on offense again, but the defense was dominant from the start. Uh, UCA's defense held Lindenwood to 258 total yards of offense. If you do that every week, you're going to win a lot of football games. Uh, the defense had seven sacks, including two and a half by Sam Horton, uh, two sacks by David Walker, one each from Jace Banesh and Kion Williams, and a half sack by Javion Jones. Held the Lions to 76 rushing yards, 2.6 yards per carry. Uh, meanwhile, the UCA offense came alive in the second quarter and was pretty dominant from there on. Sean Eric Powell scored two rushing touchdowns in the second quarter. That gave us a 13-3 lead at the half. He then took a shovel pass from Will McIlvain uh, midway through the third quarter, went 69 yards for another touchdown. Uh, Darius Hale added two rushing touchdowns. Uh, UCA finished with 554 total yards of offense. As I said, they had 258, Lindenwood. Uh, Will McElvain had 333 passing yards. Sean Derek Powell rushed for 126. Uh, Cam Robinson had 120, or excuse me, 112 receiving yards. Uh, just an overall sound victory in a pretty neat environment for college football up in St. Charles, Missouri. Interesting little place. Uh, this week we're home on the stripes, as I said. We open UAC play against the old friend from Austin P. 6 p.m. Saturday. If you remember our last meeting with Austin P, regular season finale last year, we lost 14 to 12, and that basically kept us out of the FCS playoffs. They end up winning the conference and lost in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, this year, the Governors are 0-2. They lost 62 to nothing to Louisville in their opener, and they lost 31-17 last weekend at home against number 10 ranked Southern Illinois. 
Uh, their coach left after last season. He's at, now at UTEP. Uh, so they also have a lot of new faces on their coaching staff because he took several of those. A lot of new players because he took a dozen of those with him. So it's a it's an interesting team to try to prepare for, I'm sure, for Coach Brown. Uh, ironically, UTEP lost uh, last Saturday to Southern Utah, which is a team from the UAC. So they go to UTEP, and then they have to come back and play a, a, a UAC team and lose in overtime. Uh, they were picked fifth in the UAC preseason poll, probably because a lot of people didn't know what they had coming back with the changes. Uh, looking forward to a great opener. Supposed to be nice weather this weekend, 6 p.m. kickoff. Also, we raised or we rose to seventh in both polls this week from ninth last week. They came out this morning, so we're seventh in both of the <laughs> FCS polls. Now let's hear from Coach Nathan Brown. Yeah, I want to echo echo what Steve said. Uh, very neat place in Lindenwood. Um, first time I played a game. Uh, in that area, I mean, we've been to Eastern Illinois. I guess it was just fairly close. I've been to Illinois State, but um, I don't know how many football playing schools there are in St. Louis area. There can't be many. Um, so it's kind of like they're St. Louis area's fo college football team, but they've uh, they've got a very beautiful setting, and so it was a perfect weather night for football. And um, just very proud of our our men um, going on the road and 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 playing a clean football game like we did. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to tread lightly when I say this because I don't want you guys to think that I'm not proud of our team because I am. Um, but I'm going to tell you like I told them, um, when you and, – and this is the challenge. And, and some, of it, some of the challenge is, is carrying yourself and, and being consistent, um, not only with improvement, but just the things that you do well already um, if, you're, if you're considered a, you know, the number seven ranked team in the country. I mean, there's 129 teams in FCS football and you're allegedly the seventh best team in the country. So you have to truly act like that. And so with that comes high standards and high expectations. If you hold a team to 248 yards of, of defense and you have 550 yards of offense, the score should have been more like 50 to six. Um, so that's where we've got to continue to improve upon as a as a team is, is having the killer mentality when we have a chance to end the game. Again, it's our second road trip, but our first overnight true road trip. I thought it was good to get in the hotel, get rid of distractions, come together as a team, and I thought we came out and played very clean football. Um, no turnovers on offense, 550 yards of offense, holding a team to a late fourth quarter touchdown uh, when most of that was most of our backup unit, hold a team to 248 yards. You're going to win a lot of games if you can do that. Again, the challenge is, um, are you going to get better off a 21-point win? And that, that was our, our message last night during practice, during our meeting times. It's easy to improve off a loss. It's easy to split hairs off a loss. Um, but do you get complacent after a 21-point win is the challenge. Um, and we've got a real challenge this week. Um, Austin P is 0-2, as Steve said. Um, but probably FCS-wise has played a top five most difficult schedule so far in FCS football. When you're talking about going to a Power Four team in Louisville, and then obviously uh, hosting Southern Illinois, who's a top 10 FCS team, that's no easy pill to swallow. Essentially, that's like us opening last year with Oklahoma State and North Dakota State. It's not a good spot to be in. It's tough. You know, that's 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 a tough spot. So what we have to do is we have to um, continue to play well and instill doubt in their team being an 0-2 football team. That would be easier said than done. A lot of transfers, a lot of new faces, a whole new coaching staff. Uh, Coach Walden, who was there last year, took 98% of his coaches with him to UTEP. Um, so, so they brought in uh, uh, Coach Ferris, who came from UCLA. He was at Duke prior to that. Um, he has a similar mindset and, uh, and uh, scheme to Coach Walden. So uh, a, lot of the, a lot of similar traits offensively with this group of men. Um, and brought in a defensive coordinator that was under the same coordinator tree as Austin Peay's coordinator last year. So you're going to see a 3-3-5 type defense. They're going to be everywhere all over the field. Matter of fact, I've been watching them for the last day and a half, and it just gives you a headache. I mean, they're, 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 they're just difficult to get a beat on, you know. And so we're going to have to be consistent. We're going to have to be, uh, stick to our rules and play with fundamentals. Um, because this is the type of team that we could sit here, um, do I feel like we would have a chance against this defense to make some big plays? Absolutely. I feel like we got a chance with number 27, number four, uh, Will McElvain throwing at quarterback to make big plays on anybody. 
Um, so there will be big plays to be had, but this is the type of defense that can put you in second long and third and long situations. What I've seen consistently in the first two games is a lot of second and long situations. So they're winning on first down on defense. They're just not doing a great job after that. Of course, some of that has to do with the competition they're playing. So um, very talented group. They're going to come in with a transfer quarterback from Eastern Michigan. Um, started, I think, 18, 19 games at Eastern Michigan, which is an FBS program in the MAC. Um, he is, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good quarterback that can get the ball out of his hands quick. Um, he can move around, make some plays with his feet. Again, that's new age quarterback. All of them are that way. Um, and then they've got some speed and talent at the wide receiver position. So, but it won't be very many that, that, that we played against last year. Um, that, that group that, that won the conference championship last year has really turned over that roster. Um, but they did a great job of bringing in, I think, 50-something new faces into their program, um, which that sounds like a lot, but that's pretty common in the world we're in uh, this day and age. So um, excited to talk to our guys about, you know, this is a new week of, 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 of emotions and intensity because it's a conference game. You know, you go week three and you go right into conference play. Um, this conference game is kind of sandwiched in between our non-conference schedule. You had two non-conference games, conference game, two non-conference games. So we've got to, you know, this game has teeth to it. When I say teeth to it, has, it, it has, it has some, some things that can hurt you when it's all said and done. So not that where we want to get, we want to win every game, obviously. That's, that, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But this game it is an important game to the conference race. And, and, yeah, it's happening the third week of September. And, you know, that's – that's uh, that doesn't happen very often. So our guys have got to they've got to have a great week of, week of practice. We got to have a short memory on the 21 point win. Shift the page, get better, learn from our mistakes, improve. Um, because I feel like we've got the talent to uh, if we keep getting a little bit better every single day and every single week, um, we've got the talent that can go out and play with just about anybody in this country. And I and I and I truly believe that. So. Um, Couple, couple uh, extra, extra people to note that, that that Steve mentioned. Very proud of Sam Horton, number ten on Saturday night. It's good to see some guys step up um, and get the quarterback down, other than number eight. Um, David obviously still had two sacks on the night. I think he's tied for the lead in the NCAA with sacks right now. Um, but Sam Horton had a big night. Keon Williams had a good, uh, a good night. Um, you know, you saw Javion Jones. You saw some of those inside guys that really did a good job, get, not only against the run, but really getting that quarterback off his mark. That was good to see. Um, challenged my defense, though. We didn't create any turnovers. We've got to create turnovers. Offense protected the ball, but we got to create a couple turnovers to give us some short fields and some opportunities, especially this week against a team like Austin P. So, um, looking forward to the first home game. Um, look, we've. I'll tell you this. I, I don't know that I've seen two trips. Uh, obviously, one on being easy in Arkansas State, but even the one, even the one up in uh, Lindenwood, unbelievable crowd presence. Um, a lot of purple in the stands on Saturday night in uh, in St. Charles, Missouri. Obviously, a lot of families, uh, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of young men's families were there. Um, but, but I'll tell you this: the first two weeks of the season, I think we've had as good a road attendance um, that I've seen in a, in a few years, and that's encouraging. So, what I want that to do is relay that to this weekend. I think this weekend needs to be big. It's a big but one. It's it's game one on the stripes. Two, it's conference conference game number one, which makes it even more important. Three, it's going to be a chamber of commerce type day. I think weather wise, um, there's just going to be a lot of things that are that are trending in the right direction for us on Saturday evening. Six o'clock kick, man. We ought to be out there on Bruce Street, getting getting excited and 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 ready to go and supporting these men that are working hard. And look, I you know I'm I'm going to say this tread real lightly when I say this because I don't even like talking about this. But I, this is this is my message to all Bear fans. How often do you get a chance to come play, watch the number seven ranked team in the country? I mean, we got a good group of men out there, and we worked hard to put this team together. And uh, you know, the results will take care of itself. You know, we got to play good and all that stuff. And expectations are what they are. If you don't have expectations, what are you doing, right? I mean, what, why are you even coaching? So, or playing for that matter. Uh, but how often do you got you have a chance to to, to see a, see a team like this? I believe it's our highest ranking since 2019. Um, so we're in a good spot, man. If you want to come watch great football, invite your friends, invite your family, bring your, bring your kids. Um, just good, good entertainment, hopefully with a winning, winning, winning uh, product on the field Saturday night. Get out here and support the guys. I'll be, we'll be excited to see you. So with that being said, any, any specific questions from this week or leading forward to uh, next week? Yes, ma'am. Kicking game. Kicking game. Yeah, we, we – uh, we had one blocked. Obviously, Jake missed the first one. It was a little breezy there early in the game. I think he, I think he overcompensated a little bit for the for the breeze. It obviously hit the upright, full confidence. Uh, 
Problem on the on this on this on the second one was our tight end moved his outside foot. So when we reevaluated it, um, you know, you, you, as as an edge guy blocking the edge, you want to you want to you want to make him run the hump, make him run the, his, the the worst angle you can take to the point of contact, the better off you got to get getting the kickoff. So our outside tight end leg moved about eight inches. He, he kind of pushed in, leg moved eight inches. That corner did a good job of of, of trimming the fat and coming tight and getting get, getting the block on that. Fortunately for us, um, you know, we were, we were good enough to where it wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't a factor in the game necessarily, um, but we left six points out, the, out there off of kickoffs. And especially coming off of a week like we had at Arkansas State. I mean, we were four for four with one field goal. Um, I don't even remember the distance, 43 yarder or something like that. Um, but yeah, we, we, we worked hard on that last night. Yes, sir. He did okay. <laughs> Can I be dad, or do you want me to be like? Be dad. He had a, he had he probably had five or six tackles. Uh, he had a touch. He had he touched the ball, I believe, five times. Had two touchdowns. He's not bad. <laughs> He's got a lot to work on, though. <laughs> He's got a lot to work on. I, I, if you were coaching him, you'd be splitting hairs on him. I promise you, Ron. He's a good boy, though. Dr. Bradley? Uh, your deep uh, snapper, I'm amazed at how fast he's getting down the field. Mm. Especially in Arkansas State, he made the, the tackle. He was number one. Yeah. I'm thinking about how I'm going to answer this, uh, because because Kyle, Kyle Gassaway is one of my favorite human beings. Um, coaches will appreciate this. He's one of those he's one of those whipping boys. You know what I mean? That he, he's just got one of those personalities that you can always give a hard time to. Uh, how fast is Kyle? Kyle Kyle's nickname is Biscuit, <laughs> so he's not real fast. But let me tell you this. He has worked his butt off to to uh, to get to where because here's what a lot of schemes don't block the deep snapper. When we're on our punt return, Trajan Bridges had some huge punt returns the other night. You just trust that your punt return is going to make that guy miss. And so Arkansas State they didn't block Kyle, and Kyle went down there like you said he did what he was supposed to do. He went down there and he got the guy down. And honestly, if he doesn't get the guy down, that might have been another big return. So um, Kyle's done a great job, and I'll tell you he's been so consistent with his snaps. Um, just just done an unbelievable job, and, and uh, you know, he makes us better. And, and if he can be a cover guy and get guys down, that's like a, that's like a 12th man because most people don't, don't block, the, block the deep snapper in their scheme. I love Kyle, though. Remember that. I was pointing at the camera. I don't know whether he watches it or not. Okay, well, let, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to echo it again. Please, y'all support our fall sports. Get out there to soccer. Josie, y'all keep doing what y'all are doing. Y'all are, are fun to keep up with, and the women's soccer and volleyball. Um, but make sure you you, you put a calendar uh, calendar block on on Saturday night and come out come out to the stripes and uh, let's go go try to win this first conference game. Thanks, guys. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Frank, appreciate you sharing Lucas's story. Uh, wow, just, you know, I had a chance to visit with him and his mom Saturday, and, I mean, amazing, amazing outlook. Resilient, great spirits, considering everything that happened in, you know, a 24-hour period. Just couldn't imagine, you know, the shock that, that you would have as, as an, I mean, if, if it was me, I, I was trying to put myself in those shoes, and I was like, wow. So, um, just a, a great outlook, and, and uh, certainly we're all praying for him, so. Appreciate you all keeping, keeping me in your thoughts and prayers. I um, want to introduce Ken Bissell. Ken has uh, joined the UCA Advancement staff. He is Senior Director of Legacy Planning. <laughs> came, to, came to UCA from Harding, and uh, we're glad to have Ken on board. And, and also, Dr. Mary Lackey and, and Joan Schaffner, appreciate you being here this week um, representing the Advancement staff. So, He's a recovering SID. Okay, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Ken's got some experience in college athletics, worked, 
spent some time as an SID at Harding. I try not to remember it. I try to <laughs> All right, so big week. Yeah, we've got, we've got uh, men's soccer tomorrow night at 7. Purple out. If you get a chance to go out to the game, wear purple. Uh, we'll be a purple out and, and uh, looking forward to that match. And then uh, Sunday, World Cup night, 7 p.m. as well um, at the Bill Stevens Complex. And then obviously Coach Brown mentioned Saturday, first home football game, 6 p.m. kick. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Tailgating will start at noon on Saturday. Um, come out, Coach. I hadn't looked at the forecast, but I've heard it. I've heard it sounds like it's going to be a pretty day. So, good. I see Jack Johnson back there shaking his head. He's, we've, we've got a good report. So, 81 and sunny. Oh, let's go. There we go. So, no reason not to be out there. That's right. So, anyway, uh, 6 p.m. kick. Looking forward to it. Tailgating, like I said, starts at noon. Hope to see everyone out there. Appreciate you being here. Have a great week. Go Bears. Go Sugar Bears. Bear claws up.